What's up, world? This is episode four, and the number four usually isn't popping in the Chinese culture because its pronounced pronunciation sounds a lot like death. But our number four episode is the Christmas episode, so they are not going to hold us back. We in there, boy. I'm excited. I have a question for you all to start the week. I- I've seen this a lot. Kanye has talked about it. We'll start with you, Snook. Is there, oh yeah, my two lit crew, we got Paul, we got Snook, we got Cole, and I got a question for all of you guys. Is there such thing as a bad Christmas present? Snookabooka, what if one of your loved ones, your spouse, gives you a gift that is just not anything that you would like? Is that a bad Christmas present or is it the thought that counts? Basically, the question is, is there such thing? Snookabooka, what you think? It's always the thought that counts, whether you like it or not, you act like you do, because that's just the right thing to do. Oh, what you think? I'm agreeing with mom, because if anybody comes out and, and breaks some coins off for you, uh-huh. regardless if it's what you think is good or bad, you should still be appreciative. However... <laughs> Depends on who it is, too, because, you know, you have some people you're just closer with so you can tell them. That's like, why I said there's your spouse, your spouse that you've been with, that they give you a gift that's like not at all like you. Oh, but he know better. That's that's there's no excuse for that. <laughs> <laughs> there's no excuse. Me, for that. Me. There's no excuse. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'd agree. But uh, I mean, if it's like a funny gift, then that's different. Not a gag like, gift, no. just a gift that like, it's just not at all you. Like if somebody gave me like a, coll- a, a collector's item card, well, if it's worth a lot of money, it's for me, okay? But just a random card or something like that's not for me. I'm not into Pokemon. Um, so unless it had my, like, you know, like the point is if somebody gives you a gift that's way off of what you like, but just went and got it, is that a bad gift or not? Sure. I mean, if they know you, then sure, then it's a bad gift. Yeah, they know you and they know better. Okay, so Snook said, don't matter what you get her, as long as you get her something, she loves it. Uh, Cole is just like, my husband better not try it, but anybody else that knows me and they don't give me a good gift, that's all right. Paul, I don't even know where he stands. Um, He basically said, what, (laughs) yeah? A bad gift thing? Like, but it could be a bad gift, but you could still be appreciative of it. Yeah, so here, here's for me. I would rather you get me a gift card. That's just that's just my feeling. Oh, I'm the gift card guy. <laughs> he said I'm the gift I'm different. I'm different. I, I like giving gift cards to you if I if I know that's what you want, but I prefer to have something a little bigger. I like to have a little weight to my box. No, no, no. So Send me anything in an envelope. Look. Anything that fits in an envelope, a contract that says you want to pay me a certain amount of money, a certain amount of time and dates. Uh, I like that. I like gift cards. I like cash money. If you just want, listen, don't get creative with me. My family knows the point is you don't have to get creative. Some, sometimes when people get creative, that's when they mess up. They trying to do too much sure. this holiday. Okay. I just thought I'd start out with a question. Let's move right on to remote scoreboard because this episode is going to be all things Christmas. You see, we got our Christmas attire. Cole got the hat, the blue. You know, Christmas blue is a thing. Like some people's trees are blue. She rocked out with the West Virginia shirt, the Santa hat. Snooka Book had changed her whole scenery on us. I mean, she went and got by a tree, <laughs> got the bow on her shirt. I see it coming down with the sparkles. Uh, Paulino, you know, he's too cool. So he got the PG Sports two tone hat, green. In red, yeah. not to mention he got the shirt to match. I have a shirt on, as you see, it's Christmas. Okay, I'm excited. I love Christmas, so I'm excited. On remote scoreboard, we talk about sports, we talk about business, we talk about everything that involves money, basically, in the world on remote scoreboard. And since this is Christmas, we're doing Christmassy, Christmassy topics. Paulino, what you got for us? You're just being a hater. Um, <laughs> I do have a Christmas shirt on. I said you got a Christmas Mar- shirt on. <laughs> it's uh, it's Marshawn Lynch. Oh, oh the shirt's so much better. Bell. Jingle my bells. A- is that what it says? <laughs> That's what it says. 
<laughs> well, you know, that's the problem with that's the problem with filming remotely. There's a lot of perks to it, but we couldn't see your whole shirt. You actually you might have the second best shirt on set. OK, oh, who got the first one? Hello, West Virginia. <laughs> West Virginia. Oh, I, maybe y'all nah, can't see. This my is stuff. this is also this is also custom made by my boy. So like this is like, this is custom. Okay, you know you might have killed me with uh, the custom. This was sent directly from who this is. So I mean, I bought yeah. it, but they yeah. sent it. That counts. I like to support Marshall, people. Just throwing Marshall that out wants there. This shirt now. He wants this shirt now. So I don't. That's another thing. Um, Woody Woods. I don't like when I make something custom and then the people that I made it custom from make their own. I'm like, huh? That's that's my design. Like you can't just cop yours after I created a whole masterpiece. That's a side note. But Paul, what do we got on remote scoreboard? Yeah, so um, the first one we'll go over is uh, Juju Smith holster. He donated or not donated. He uh, picked up the the tab on the layoff uh, layaways. Um, I don't know what store. Bur I think it was Bur Burlington or, Co or, Factory. Co Factory. Right? Yeah, in Pittsburgh. Oh, I saw that. That's nice. yeah. That so awesome. it's the layaway family. giveaway, right, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I love yeah, so these. I love all of these stories. Yeah. Juju gets in a lot of stuff. Like you know, like he's always in something. But it's like this. I just what I've seen a lot from him is he's always doing stuff for the community. On this one, he went to a particular Burlington Co factory in Pittsburgh where he plays. And he paid off like $12,500 worth of layaway stuff for Christmas. It's a program that they do where they pick families, they have them pick stuff for to put on layaway. And then different celebrities, actors, athletes, whoever has extra money, philanthropists, they start paying, paying off these layaways for these families to now have gifts for Christmas. Y'all know I'm here for that. Like that's, I think that's an awesome thing because, you know, sometimes when you do giveaways, you don't know if it's what the kids want. With the layaway giveaway, they picked exactly what they want out. You just clear the tab. Yeah. I think yeah, that's right. Um, the next one is Kobe Bryant shoes, uh, the Grinch shoes. They are, they're pretty dope. I would say to wear like as a basketball player and playing, but probably not casual wear. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're yeah. So the Grinch, man. Okay, so we're showing you these shoes. The Grinch shoes are so lit. Like, I would probably play in them all season long. They're, you know, they're the color green of the Grinch. But the coolest part about it is Kobe Bryant wore them in 2010, right when they were re originally released. And they haven't been released since 2010. So obviously with Kobe passing this year and then having a Christmas drop of the Grinches clearly they're going to sell out i'm not going to get a pair i would get a pair just to probably sit right here these are by the way i never talked about my set but these are the shoes that i want a championship with um in minnesota these are the same shoes we got like purple rain coming down on because it was like our prince year we felt like and then he invited us to paisley park and gave us a private concert that's a whole nother story but that's what these shoes in this case are um, I don't know. I don't think they would replace these shoes, but the Grinches are dope and just obviously because of Kobe. But what else? Are, are those Kobe's? Yeah, these are Kobe's. I only play in Kobe's. Like for, after a certain point, I only played in Kobe's. You can check the tape. <laughs> receipts, receipts. I'm all about receipts. I'm all about them. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have someone pull up your stats for your words and after you were Kobe's. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, you know what though? I had, yeah, I had a bad ankle tear. So I used to only wear high tops because I'm like, got to protect the ankles. I was under that like dumb thought process. And I used to only wear high tops, tore my ankle completely in three places, wearing high tops, went to low tops, haven't had a problem since. So yeah, I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with the Kobe's. So last one. NBA again, um, NBA uh, Christmas jerseys. They didn't have them last year, which I didn't really remember. But uh, I saw an old tweet from LeBron last year that he wanted them back this year. Not sure if they're doing it this year. Obviously, COVID probably reasons. They probably didn't even have time to even right. think of the concept of making Christmas jerseys. So what do y'all think? Like but Christmas you, Day Would you guys want to see them? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, would you guys want to see? I love them. What do y'all guys, what do you feel about Christmas Day jerseys, Cole? I, I think it's a great idea. And I said, why not? I mean, what else do we, I mean, what else do we have to do? Like, I, I would say if you're going to watch the games, I mean, they do different jerseys for football. They do different colors for different, you know what I mean? So why not? Just my cleats, they do, they yeah. do 
military games. They have them. Oh, our Martin Luther King jerseys are lit. Snook, what do you think? Like, got to have Christmas jerseys. What's up? Well, I think it would be very festive for everyone in the family to have on their team's special jerseys. So then you would have a different mix of jerseys, and, and that would be pretty cool. Every moment yeah. you were in the second so it would be a mix. If you are a fan of the Lakers, you would have that on. If you're a fan of Miami, you'd have that on. So with, yeah. uh, with uh, seven grandchildren and three children and, and with 10 shirts, I'm sure it would be pretty festive. Oh, for sure. And you hit on something. I'm shocked that they didn't get around to that because I know those jerseys probably sell well. I remember when they did like the t-shirt ones and those were lit. Uh, A lot of people didn't like the t-shirt jerseys. I wouldn't necessarily want to play in it, but to wear it as a fan, it's like a soccer jersey. I'm with it. What do you think, Paul? Mm -hmm. Like, yay or nay? You like the Christmas Uh, jersey, Scrooge? Oh, overall, yeah, they're cool, but not, not not the sleeved ones. I knew he wasn't going to like the sleeves. I thought they were lit. Like, I remember LeBron was, like, ripping out of him, wasn't he, or something. He was doing, like, the Hulk thing or something, like, strong. What else? Do they have any? How wild would you go if you had Christmas jerseys? Because I know, I remember you did Christmas in July. You walked in. Listen, they messed up at Atlanta and just gave me a holiday. Not me personally, but I felt it was for me. It was called Christmas in July. It's actually a real thing. People do it. I got dressed up like it was Christmas and everybody know. And then I walked into the locker room and nobody else was dressed up. I'm like, huh? And I was like, did y'all get the memo? They told us it was Christmas in July. And my teammates was looking at me like, okay. And I'm like, what? I had on, look, I had on my ugly Christmas hoodie. I was ready to go. I couldn't believe it. So you best believe if they gave me a Christmas jersey, I'm going to wear that jersey on Christmas Eve. I'm going to wear that jersey on New Year's Eve. Yeah, all of that. I would too. What else? That's it. Okay, that's it for the scoreboard. That was one, <laughs> two, three. That was fast. I like that. And we're going to be moving faster. I can't tell you why yet. <laughs> I'm bad at hints. I'm bad at hints, so I can't tease why we're going to be moving faster. But we're going to move faster. Next up, we have Hero IRL. If you don't know what that stands for, it means hero in real life. There's a lot of people doing a lot of amazing things. And because it's Christmas and I love Christmas, I want you guys to make sure like when you leave this episode, you understand I really love Christmas. So much so that our hero IRL, now she's doing amazing things. She didn't just get it because of her name, but I love her name. Karima Christmas Kelly. She's another one of my colleagues in the WNBA. Her last name is Christmas. She married into Kelly. So I always have to say Karima Christmas Kelly. Um, to make sure I shout out the hubby, but she's killing it. She's doing Christmas for kids. And she's one of those people she's hero IRL because she does Christmas for kids where she likes to, I'll let her tell you what they do at Christmas for kids. But the reason that I wanted to make her hero in real life is because man, she's overcame so many major serious injuries and keeps coming back and still has this like light hearted, like just check Karima Christmas out hero in real life. I'm Karima Christmas Kelly. I'm a 10-year vet in the WNBA. Right now, it's like one of our main events is just being able to provide Christmas presents for, you know, underprivileged families and kids. Uh, So this year, we were able to actually adopt three families, was able to get, you know, everything on their wish list with through donations and different things like that. Um, But how it came about, actually, when I was younger, um, so my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. She's a breast cancer survivor. So there was one year where she was out of work, wasn't able to, um, you know, work. And it was only my dad, single parent, kind of bringing in the money. So we got to a point where we were saying, you know, Christmas might look different this year for us, especially, you know, for the kids. It's it's a different feeling for us. Our last name was Christmas, so it was always a big thing every year. Um, but, you know, we kind of just came to terms with it and just said, you know, Christmas might look different. We might not have anything under the tree, but, you know, we're together. Um, but my AAU team had something different in mind. They actually, you know, got together and gave us everything that we kind of wanted for Christmas, brought it over Christmas morning. We didn't even know they were coming. Um, so that kind of is what sparked my interest into kind of helping others and, you know, being somebody that can probably pop up out of the blue and be able to, you know, make Christmas special for different families. I definitely think through donations, I'm at the point where we're doing another, um, another event, which is a shoe drive. So a lot of people have been sending in, you know, new or gently used shoes 
trying to give back to the communities that I'm, I've been a part of right now. I'm actually in Nashville. So it's another community that I'm kind of like trying to immerse myself into and being able to see different areas and different communities that need our help. So being able to, to give back in any way that I can is something that I'm really focused on, uh, especially during these times, you know, a lot of people are going through different things with the pandemic and not being able to work and provide for their families. So I definitely want to be able to help as many people as I can but definitely through donations, I have my own um, website. So that's a good resource to kind of figure out what we're doing next or how you can you know, donate or different things like that and where you can send stuff as well. I mean, I think I find my strength uh, through my mother, you know, seeing her go through that at such a young age and just seeing the person that she is and the person that she kind of grew into over the years and how many people just love being around her. You know, she's always looking to help people out. So I think that kind of trickled down to me as well. And I, I just want to find ways that I can do that as well. Um, as far as injuries, I mean, it's been a tough three years every year just trying to battle back and get back to a point where, you know, you're doing something that you love again. So hopefully, you know, this is the last time I had to go through this, but I mean, it, it was hard, but I think I had to just channel my efforts into helping other people kind of get my mind off of what I was going through and just seeing that other people are going through other things. Like I get up every day, I might not be able to walk, you know, when I had surgery, but some people are, are trying to figure out if the lights will come on, how they can provide, you know, meals for their families, how different things like that you know, kind of comes into their day of day of wondering and day of trying to figure out what am I going to do next. So if I can do this little thing to kind of help them and encourage them on their way, you know, it helps me kind of put my mind at ease as well. I'm Karima Christmas Kelly and I'm rocking with Remotely Renee. All right, I'll, Karima. She already knows. I already told her. I hit her up right when she got hurt. And I was just telling her like, yo, if anybody can get through it, you can get through it. I know that's not even what people want to hear, but I just see her as just this strong warrior and now understanding what her mom went through and her mom overcame. I mean, I get it. So hero IRL, Karima Christmas, Kelly, and shouts to Christmas for kids. You guys donate. They're trying to do amazing things. Moving on to remote reviews. And I love this. It's book club for TV and we review different things. We ask our friends to review different things. Today, what we're going to talk about is what is your favorite Christmas movie and why? Now, I'm actually a little bit surprised that this is so controversial. I mean, I guess I, I, I figured Love Actually was going to be the easy choice, but we'll start with you, who, Paulino. Do, he, I'm going to sort of call him the Grinch the whole time. Do you even like Christmas, oh Paul? God. And do you like any <laughs> Christmas movie? I'm not a fan of any holidays anymore, so... Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know what I hate the most? Birthdays. <laughs> what do you mean? I hate Absolutely the most worse. birthdays. That's <laughs> the day <laughs> someone was born, came into this earth. What do you mean? Uh, <laughs> not like all right. The birthday is fine. The day is fine, but not the week or the month. Oh, yeah, there's no. going to be a lot of women oh. upset with you. <laughs> Good. Good. So they, do they, you they like any, do you like, so there's no holidays that you prefer? Thanksgiving. Okay, so he likes Thanksgiving. Is there a holiday movie that you might not hate? You don't have to like it. Like maybe don't hate it. I mean, I like. It. I don't. I wouldn't say any of the the ones that I like are my favorites. So. so, do you have an answer for us, Paul? Basically, like, is there an answer for a holiday? Look at this Grinch. Oh, you want to just? Is there one that you could tolerate? Let's just even go to tolerate. Oh, yeah. Like I've I've been watching Christmas movies. What? Okay. okay. What have you been watching? <laughs> I watched I watched Elf. I watched uh, the Friday uh, next Friday after. Uh, okay, Babcock, my co-host on TMZ Sports, said that's one of the worst. Don't like that's one of the worst Christmas like not movies but Christmas movies but movies. Period. No, nah, I like that one. Okay, so <laughs> Paul. Oh, I like actually. You know what? I'll give my favorite one. Then the it's well, it's not. I guess it's not newer anymore. It's from 2015. Uh, I think the night before it was Seth Seth Rogen. Oh my God, your doppelganger? Great choice. I mean, really, he just wants to see himself on the screen. What? What is this? Oh my what God. is this? Now I have to look. Now I have to look and see. Is it Paul's doppelganger? Oh my is gosh. Really? Have you seen Seth Rogen and Paul at the same place at the same time? Never. Are you kidding me? I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to look. They I didn't look even pay attention to that. Oh my <laughs> goodness. We need to get like a side by side view. Paul, like, oh. <laughs> 
Yes, right. No, it was jo- it was Jonah side. Hill that more people were saying. More people oh, were saying. Oh, actually, Hill, I got the guys over. confused. It's Jonah but it's Hill same, because people said that uh, Seth Rogen too. It's Jonah oh, wow. Hill. No, no, no. Jonah oh. Hill is his doppelganger. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Y'all are all the same category of human, but it's it's the bearded guys like you know like that's y'all but yeah no it's it's which one is it jonah hill is your doppelganger oh um, that's what i looked at cole what what we what we thinking what's your favorite holiday movie it's so hard for me because i love all holiday movies i love the hallmark cheesies i love the grinch i love a couple of variations of the grinch um <laughs> by the way Jim Carrey's grinch is the best grinch ever i will say it i'll say it um i love <laughs> Christmas story. I'm here for it all. So I can watch 36 days of Christmas, 24 hours a day. It wouldn't bother me at all. Cheesy, non Sister! Yes, sir. I'm not going to even pick one. I, it's like picking your children. Who's your favorite? You can't do it. You love them all the same. So can't do it. Paul doesn't have kids, so he doesn't get it. Snook, what do you think? <laughs> well... One of my favorite movies of all time was Scrooge because it has such a humane thing with the feeling and all of that. But you know what? I like the takeoff of Bill Murray of Scrooge even yeah. better. So funny. It took that movie and made it really brought it up to date. And oh. it's a little bit more, you know, relevant to today's society. And it's so, so funny. So it takes, you know, where you're sad and you know, Scrooge and all of that. And then you watch Scrooge and it's like, wow, you know, it's kind of funny. So I like Scrooge a lot. I, I try to watch it every year. I like that. So we have right on the show. Mom. Hey, I have a surprise right for everyone. I got Scrooge on the show. Say hello, VP. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> surprise. It's not, no, it's not like I'm a Scrooge or Grinch. It's just, I just don't, it's not like I'd hate it. If you don't love Christmas, that's very Scroogey to me. I'm sorry. It feels like very, like, how do you not love Christmas? It's like, it's supposed to give you all, it's made to give you all the feels. It even says the spirit. My favorite Christmas movie. Okay. So actually let's talk about this for a second. Mine is love actually. And I don't know if you guys know, Snook is an enabler. She's sitting there very quiet, but she sent me an article that was talking about love actually. Look at her looking. And this article told me how love actually was among the top Christmas movies, like people chose this as one of the top Christmas scenes. There's like a hundred thousand of them, but the, to me, you are perfect scene. The one I was trying to tell Paulino about, and he said, yeah, that's weird. That's, that was voted amongst one of the top Christmas movie scenes of all time, Snookabooka. And she, you know, she has references and she has good sources. So this is a legitimate source that said this. I was trying to put y'all on the game. One of the best of all time. Oh, and we also we also asked some of my friends what their favorite Christmas holiday sh- well, I should say holiday movies are. Check it out. Holiday movie. I feel like Home Alone is the only right answer, right? <laughs> it's the only right answer. Um, Miracle on 42nd Street, probably. Favorite Christmas movie. I'm going to say... You say Home Alone, man. My, my wife puts that on a million times, so we go ahead and watch it. <laughs> I can't, you know, the kids love it. It, it was something I watched as a kid, so I'm going to go with that one. Ooh, um, uh, I'd give you a different answer every year because it's whatever <laughs> I watched last. The last one I watched was Charlie Brown Christmas, actually. Uh, that, okay. was, that was pretty fun to watch. Oh, and, and uh, the newest one I've, I've seen, uh, Jingle Jangle. We had we had John Legend on my podcast recently. That is so good. We really enjoyed that. Yeah. Chaston has, there's this one really catchy song that Chaston has on full blast, like, all the time now. Best holiday movie, movie for us, I would have to say, is, is uh, This Christmas. I just love, I love the... Yeah, yeah, Chris Brown get to sing it. It's a wrap. Best holiday movie. Oh man, you know what? I get this is like a very corny pick, but I have been watching this since I was a kid. I feel like I was indoctrinated into this movie. Is a Christmas story that one that they play twenty four hours yeah. on Christmas it's a, Eve. It's a classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He doesn't agree. They're crazy. <laughs> That's a lot. 
Honestly, I don't have a favorite. I'm always just trying to figure out because you know, like Hallmark has those like you know mushy gushy movies. I'm always trying to watch some of those. My husband hates it, <laughs> but it's always something I try to just see. Like, what's the new movie? Netflix has been pretty good too, putting out some new Christmas movies. So yeah, I kind of just wait and see what else they'll put out every year. Okay, so. As you can see, a lot of people have a lot of different movies. Uh, Karan thinks this Christmas. Lexi thinks there's only one right answer, but I digress. A couple people, we actually polled at Remotely Renee, and a couple people said Elf. Um, some people said Home Alone 2, Christmas Vacation. Has anybody seen Christmas Vacation? I've never even heard of it. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I should That's a funny one as well. Be, Who's we in it? Chevy Chase. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We watched, we just watched them about three times. Oh, that is a good one. That is a good one. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's oldie but a goodie. Yes. Oh, I gotta like, I feel like I'm missing out on a goodie. Wait a minute. Shouts <laughs> to the poll. Okay, okay. So since we're talking all things Christmas, I wanted to do something like really cool and dope for my Christmas episode. And so for Remotely One-on-One, -on -one, we got to follow suit with that theme. And I was, I talked to Snookabooka about ideas. I asked Twitter about ideas. And sometimes the best idea is right in front of you. So for this Remotely One-on-One, -on -one, I went one-on-one -on -one with recording artist here in Atlanta, Serena Grace, who just so happens to be my fiance and super talented and this amazing vocalist who hasn't released any music of her own. On her Instagram, I'm sure you've probably seen her sing if you follow her. And again, amazing. I'm biased and she's still amazing, unbiased. But she's releasing her first debut song. And where else is she going to premiere? But right here on Remotely Renee on the Christmas episode. So I just talked to her about just the journey. I mean, I was with her every step of the way. And it's artists, you know, it's a different lifestyle. It's like with basketball. I know that if I work hard, I know that if I'm like training a lot, I'm in the gym, I can get results. With artists, they can put in all the time and all the effort and your song just might not hit or people might not be feeling you. We are not going to have that problem with Serena Grace because you guys better like it. Just kidding. <laughs> but I'm serious. So anyway, <laughs> oh, we're fighting. Anyway, earlier this week, I sat down with Serena just to talk about creating her song, the concept. Her song is called This Holiday. Check it out. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Episode four and a half, a Christmas special. And I go one-on-one -on -one with recording artist Serena Grace, but also my fiance. So Serena, thank you for going one-on-one -on -one with me. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm remotely Renee. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so Serena, you drop you are dropping your first single here live with us. This is the premiere of yes. this holiday. And it's a festive song. So was that always the plan to launch with a festive song? It actually was not the plan. I got a call from my good friend, Stone Stafford. He's the owner of Icon Studios. And he kind of just prompted me. He kind of dared me to write a song or to remix a song. So I was like, okay. So when I get dared, I'm a little competitive. So, <laughs> so I, I took on the dare. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to right go ahead and write a song uh, and, and so it just kind of just came about so it wasn't it wasn't part of the plan but i'm glad that it became it became something hey, oh it became something <laughs> and i can't help but notice that the lyrics could apply to anyone being away from their loved ones this holiday but this holiday the song not this <laughs> holiday both of it feels like it could apply directly to the pandemic was it inspired any by the pandemic Absolutely. Yes, it was inspired by the pandemic. Um, I feel like everything now is a life or death decision. So you have to be real selective about your, about your choices and your decisions right now and who you who you see during, you know, even during the holidays, you know, you want to be around your family and sometimes at this during this time is that's not possible. But it became a little frustrating to me when um, you know, when I when I realized that I couldn't really see my family or my loved ones that were so far away. And so I was like, I'm going to write about this. So I just kind of had fun with it and, and just wrote about, you know, kind of being a Grinch a little bit on this Christmas. But I, I love Christmas, my favorite holiday. But I'm a little sad in this song because I'm, I'm away from my loved ones. I love it. So <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot of people will feel this song. 
I remember you searching YouTube beats on YouTube. <laughs> you had made a list of your top three and you was like, all right, choose one of the top three. How do you go from picking YouTube beats to, I think, I mean, having a bop, you got a Christmas bop. Well, thank you. Um, I mean, just, it's a, it's a long process just looking through YouTube songs and things like that, but it, I, you just have to look for something that speaks to you. And so um, I grew up in New York. I'm, I grew up around hip hop. And so I didn't want something that sounded like, I mean, my favorite artist is Mariah Carey. So everybody probably thought that I was going to do something that sounded like Mariah Carey. <laughs> But um, I actually wanted to, you know, urban it up a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm from the city, so I wanted to add a little bit of, of, of urban sounds in there. So I found a, a beat that, that spoke to me. And you find a lot of great producers on YouTube that just put out this content and, and it's just available to us. And, you know, I just kind of took advantage of it. You took advantage of it. Mm-hmm. And I want to give people a timeline because... I know a lot of people, the A&Rs, we'll get to that, you know, wanted would want you to have a way longer rollout, but I want people to understand how this song became about. On November 25th, you booked a studio session at Icon, and it, this was on a whim. <laughs> I remember you even- The day sa- before Thanksgiving. The day before, yeah. So I remember you even saying, look, I'm gonna just go in there and see what happens. You went in there, you laid down the course, and shouts to Bless, your engineer, he blessed the track. Do you remember that moment when you got out and we were listening to the chorus? Like, do you remember what you were thinking in that moment? Yeah, of course. I was thinking like, oh my God, I created something. I I didn't, I mean, I've written songs before, but I've always had somebody kind of with me in the studio. So this was, this was the first song that I recorded, that I, that I wrote and recorded by myself. And it was a little scary because um, I, I, like I said, I, I worked with, with people in the past and they've always kind of been there with me in the studio, kind of letting me know what sounds good, what, what might not go. And so it feels good to just kind of create something from scratch and then actually have it turn out to be something good. Something really good. <laughs> and I'm, ki- I'm continuing with the timeline so that people can get an idea. On December 6th, we went back to Icon. Mm-hmm. You booked a four hour session because you wanted to get as much done as you could of the song. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure you finished everything except two lines and some backgrounds. And I always want to ask artists this because I know for a fact that when Cardi B was in the studio mixing up and mashing WAP, I know they know they had a hit. Like, I know they knew it. Did you feel like that in the studio that like, all right, this one could really do something? I felt like, um, I don't know. I feel like every artist kind of feels like they have a hit when they write. <laughs> I'm sure. So I, I didn't I don't necessarily like to think of myself like that. I, I, I'm very hard on myself. So I don't I don't think that that um anything, you know, I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that I don't think that anything I do is good, but no, because that's not true. No, you're a perfectionist. I, I am a perfectionist. Yes. So so I I everything that I do, I try to just judge myself as if I'm not myself as if let's say like even if somebody doesn't like me will they like this you know so so I I try to judge it just from a different from a different point of view before you do your at home concert again working (laughs) remotely I want to know just what is the feel like before people hear what do you want people to feel when they hear the song I want people I want people to feel good, even though I am talking about um, not seeing my loved one. For, I'm, even though I am talking about um, not being, you know, being far away from my loved one, um, I, I wanted to feel a little bit nostalgic, a little bit. I wanted to feel like a, a it's a it's a feel good type of song. I, you know, it kind of kind of has like a little throwback elements to it, like mm-hmm. '90s elements. So I, I wanted to give people a little bit of that. I guess that nostalgic feeling, you know, because so there's so many new things in 2020 that I wanted something to remind me of the past a little bit. Yeah. Like it's 2019. I think there's a a lyric in your song. (laughs) Okay. So baby, listen, I just want to say I'm super proud. I'm, I watched you have literally bring this song to life from a beat on YouTube that you bought to now throwing lyrics to one of these. You leased it. Okay, get me right, because I don't know this (laughs) stuff. Get me together. But whatever, you leased the beat, put lyrics to it, created a melody, gave it life. Like, I've never seen that type of process. 
I'm connected to the project. As you guys can see, this is my whole fiance and I'm sensitive. Keep in mind that she's an artist and I'm sensitive about her stuff. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to say that, but even without having bias, I even shot the song to one of my homies, uh, Eb, shouts to Baby G. Like, <laughs> shouts to Eb. Shouts to Eb. People that are music people have heard the song. They mess with it. I'm just going to say, <laughs> people like the song. I like you. I want you guys to like this show. Please like her song. But without further ado, I just wanted to give my baby a great intro. You guys are about to see the world premiere of Serena Grace's debut single this holiday. Thank you for joining me on Remotely 101. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. This this was amazing.
What y'all thinking? Oh, I'm telling you. Nice. I need the link. I need it. I need. I need the song. I need the song. So when she drop it, it's gonna be bumping on my Christmas Eve. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yes, sir. What you think, Snooka? Book of this holiday by Serena Grace. What you thinking? When you saw me moving and grooving, hey. so <laughs> my life. Yes. I could see your face. I'll do it for you. So as you guys can see, she's talking about she'd risk her life to see their face. This song talks about being away from your loved ones while, you know, sometimes work has you away. A lot of WNBA players are overseas in the holidays. Also, as you guys can see, risking your life this holiday is a real thing. If you want to see family, it's a real thing to, to have to be careful and safe. What you thinking, Paul? Paul's a tough critic. I'm even nervous to ask you. You better like it. What do you think about this holiday? Oh, yeah. I thought the song was good. Um, it's just funny because I know you guys both. So it's, just, it's <laughs> I told you I told you in the text message. That's why it's like, it's different. Yeah, so when you I know asked people. Paul one time about, this is, Sam doesn't even know this. I asked Paul one time about like um, Serena and he was like, yeah, like if I didn't think she was good, I would not even waste my time. <laughs> He's so, I'm like, <laughs> he's a man of will you say cole it's straight to the truth that's yeah. it he's a man of little words but it's like he's so blunt that's why i like to ask him stuff because i know he gonna tell it okay i hit up i i hit you up uh to talk to sam or serena beforehand like way before remember yeah no it's unbelievable um we like Paul's like the manager of the family period. Like he even junior hits him up for questions. We have a chat called Q and a it's actually hilarious. Paul's a computer sometimes. Oh, I, I got a think. funny, I got a funny little story. So when I was on the phone with you this week and I said like someone from West Virginia text me, but like, I'm going to, whatever, I'll go and read it after. And then, uh, and then the lady called me and I was like, you know, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get back to you in a minute. And then she called and then I'm like, wait, and I had to look at my phone. I didn't have Snook's number saved in my phone. So Snook was calling and texting me while we were on the phone together. And then the other lady called. So, yeah. Wait a minute. Why was Snook, Snook why were you calling and texting VP? Well, oh, I was, you told me she was going to text you about the lady. I was the down before the call. So, Say uh, what? The whole trying, point was I didn't have Snook's down. number in my phone. I know, but what was you getting the lowdown on? I just think this is funny that Snook's calling Paulino. Shared <laughs> <laughs> his information with someone, con his contact information, and I was trying to call him to tell him that I had shared it and give him the lowdown about what they were calling about, so he would be oh, like informed. That. About the okay, okay. <laughs> I like that though. That's real though. I don't. I don't share my number if you don't ask me first. I do think that's a little bit crazy. Um, because how do you so know I'll my number that for that person? Huh? <laughs> Paul, I'll make sure you have my number for the next time I have to. <laughs> you want to save Snooka Booker's <laughs> number, I saved, I saved it now. <laughs> <laughs> it was always just in the group chat, and you were just the, the, three, the 304 number, so I just always knew it was you. I just realized that we've been in a group chat way too long for you not to have saved Snooks. Yeah, it went number. way past both of you guys' heads. Well, have you saved Cole's number? Because she's what, the 443 one? Yeah. No, I had to save hers yet because I couldn't remember that one. Oh, my goodness. So I'm glad we're all in each other's like We got a whole show together and we just now saving contacts. Great. <laughs> Moving Renee on. Also got upset. She also got upset, upset at me one time when I had her name as just her name on my phone. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Paul had me saved as Renee Montgomery. Like, my full government, like, we're not even friends. Like, that's, <laughs> that's weird to me. I don't know. Like, like if I save somebody by their full government, this is a professional call so that I can see, oh, wow, Olivia Scarlet is calling me. I need to, like, put my professional voice on. Hello? Yes, this is Renee. Yeah, yeah I need to put, put all of that on there. Like, Paul had me saved at that type of number. I didn't know whether to be flattered, to be bothered, like change my mind. <laughs> I didn't know about that but we're moving on to remote roots and since we're covering all things Christmas I just know that Snooka Book is going to have something Christmassy for us we're pausing on Fanny Pearl right now for Christmas what you got Snook 
Okay, well, I was just going to share some stories about, well, a story about what happened to us every Christmas. You know, Renee played overseas uh, every Christmas for so many years. And so uh, I worked in education, so I was able to get off most of the month of December. And so we would travel to whatever country Renee was in and spend a few weeks with her prior to Christmas because she was always rushing home trying to get home for Christmas Day. And so we went to uh, Vologda, Russia. We went to, uh, let's see, Canberra, Australia. One Christmas we went to, uh, let's see, Gdansk in Poland. And we went to Paris, France one Christmas. But every Christmas, no matter what we did or how well we planned, it seemed like we were always fighting to try to get back home for Christmas. And actually on our last trip uh, in Paris, when we went, there was a storm there and we had to take a train from where Renee was stationed to get with her team to where the airport was. And the train ride was about an hour, hour and a half. Yep. So they had to storm the previous day. And so we get to the airport and everybody's all lined up and you know, everybody's trying to go to their destinations for Christmas. And we get up there in line and they said, well, we canceled your flight. So what? Her flight back <laughs> home to America. Yes, then they told us, well, they didn't have any flights that they could book us on to get back to West Virginia. So needless to say, we were very, very upset. Delta, I'm still mad were, at Delta for this. Uh, and so the people who were scheduled to fly on the flight that was leaving that day, instead of them giving us their flight and delaying them, they made us get uh, behind them and scramble to try to, you know, get to our destinations. And so we had to end up flying to somewhere in Kentucky and renting a car and then driving the rest of the way to West Virginia. And we always tried to get here by Christmas Eve because, you know, there's always at my church, St. Paul Baptist and St. Albans. Shout out to St. Paul Baptist and St. Hey! Albans. What's St. Hey! Paul? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we always needed to get back so we could see, you know, the grandchildren in the Christmas play. Well, one year, I think the year that we were in uh, Canberra, Australia, we were getting back. And my granddaughter, Shayla, the church has a Christmas party for Jesus. And so <laughs> Shayla was going to the Christmas party for Jesus. And so it was at someone's house. And so Shayla, who's about six or seven years old at that time, she got to the door and she took off her wraps and everything. And so she spoke to the pastor and all of that. And then she started her trek of going to every room in the house and looking in the rooms and looking around and trying to see if there was someone there she didn't know. And so the pastor asked us, well, well, Shayla, uh, she said, well, pastor, where is he? And pastor said, where is who, Shayla? She said, Jesus, it's his birthday party. He's not here. <laughs> 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 so so Pooh Bear was looking. So my niece Pooh Bear was looking for Jesus on his birthday. And you know what? I think a lot of us is looking for Jesus on his birthday during Christmas. She just thought he was going to physically be there. You don't want to know something like you guys might think that's kind of crazy to go to a birthday party for Jesus. We're that's not crazy for our family. Every Halloween, it used to not be Halloween. We used to go to the fall festival. Cole, you know about it. We would dress yeah. up as biblical yeah. characters. I was Mary one year. We were the three. We, yeah. We've been everything. Like, so Halloween, everything. Used to, Halloween used to not be a thing either. Um, we used to go to church for Halloween and fall festival. So yeah. of course on Christmas, we're going to Jesus's birthday. Hey, yeah. listen. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen what would like you know how they had that song what if god was one of us what if he just showed up at the birthday party like yo what's good how many candles where my candles at though i would be like i guess we're all ready to go since you're here <laughs> <laughs> i guess we're all but, ready to go uh, since you're here me time's up, <laughs> time's right. up. don't leave without me listen i'm gonna tell right. you right I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if anybody else other than our church was watching these movies, but I used to have nightmares about Left Behind. It was this movie about oh. when, the, when the rapture came and if the rapture came and it left without you, we was watching this stuff young. I don't know if it's for kids because I was having I nightmares higher, about I think it should be a higher rating on that because I mean, I was even older and I was like, 
wow. If I woke up and the sun was like halfway up and it was like a pink hue, I was like, run to the house. Like, is anybody else still here? I'm still here. <laughs> Same. I used to, listen, we used to always know if we could find Diddy that Jesus definitely hasn't good. came yet because if Diddy is still on <laughs> earth, then, then we're okay. But that, listen. We're okay. That so my niece got it honest by thinking Jesus was gonna be at his birthday party, Chris Mass. If y'all didn't know that, that that's what that's about. Love it, Snookabooka. Love your stories. I know that people probably love the photos. Um, let's move on to something a little more delicious. And by delicious, I mean distant dining. We haven't done this one yet. This is distant dining. We do everything remote here, even eat together. We were supposed to do distant dining on my birthday. And the mail service is letting down a lot of people on Christmas. I hope that a lot of kids aren't going to think that they're on the naughty list because USPS is not getting our presents out in time. I don't know what's going on, but this time we actually, we got one person got the box from me. Everybody got the box from Snook. So Snookabooka, tell us what kind of cookies you made for us for distant dining. Okay. Well, since we have the Christmas theme here and you know, uh, Traditionally, fruitcake is a, a, a cake that many people have at Christmas time. I've never re really been a big fan of fruitcake because uh, it has figs in it and uh, some other things that aren't as sweet as I would like them. So uh, my mother-in-law, Miss Lucy Montgomery, shared a recipe with me for her Lucy's Texas Lizzie's. And it's actually a fruitcake cookie. And you can see here, fruitcake cookie. And... Um, <laughs> It has uh, bourbon in it, uh, and Ooh, I just always- get drunk on the holidays. I'll risk it all for <laughs> you this holiday. <laughs> and okay. so I've been yeah. for years, and I have lots of requests. I even mail them out to different people because uh, people have them, and you know, I used to when I was at work, I would take them, and then people's husbands want me to make them for them, and all of that. So it's kind of a popular cookie that I make and send out, and I put a lot of love into it. It takes a lot of ingredients to make them. So at any rate, I hope everyone enjoys their cookie. Uh, VP, have you had a, a, te a Lucy Texas Lily? I mean, <laughs> Lucy Texas Lizzie. Uh, no, I got it in my hand though, but I, I just like you know because I wanted to break it. Okay, so. Like bread, bread. <laughs> Great not bread. I know this is like how look, I yeah. listen, there's not a there's not a pretty one. Oh yeah, and let me that's what I wanted to show too, because Snook is fancy around here, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you guys to see the box. Snook sends it like really packaged out, like like she cook with Snook. Now this is a different, like I feel like this is an acquired taste, you know. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's like you're either gonna hate them or you're gonna love them. I know I love them. Do you really, Cole? You don't even like sweets. I don't, but y'all been talking and I've been eating. <laughs> oh, okay, Snooka Book of Paul. I you can be blind. Paul, I think just give it to us, Paul. <laughs> what? Just give it to us. Do you like it or not? Oh, um, I think so. I did. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what is what am I what kind of <laughs> or whatever. There's a lot going on, right? I just well, had a green thing in there. Now it, like a red it has uh, it has uh, candy cherries, candy. What if I'm allergic? You guys didn't even have uh, Are you allergic to anything, Paul? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> he, said, he said, "What if he's allergic?" <laughs> Nobody asked. <laughs> oh, okay. It has walnuts and pecans. It has uh, yellow. Raisins, uh, dark raisins. Wow. It has a lot of fruit in it. Cole <laughs> said he'd be dead. I said dead. He'd be dead. Thank God he's not because he got F. Can we, get, can, we get, can we get Diddy on the line right now and ask him how what he's rating is? Diddy doesn't eat uh, this. He doesn't eat he, Even better. Most of the things I <laughs> Diddy is a, a meat and potatoes type of man. That's it. That's it. He's meat and potatoes. I thought it was I'm so a sweet mad potato. that no one else got their boxes because I want you guys, Snook, you got your box with you? Yes. I'm so mad. Well, Snook, I wanted, so this is my first time being a business owner. Um, and so TMZ, Harvey, shouts to my boss, Harvey, 
they're rich over there, I guess. And they sent us all like <laughs> gift cards with real money on there. And I'm like, woo, okay, well, this is just year one for me. So I wanted to send people a unique gift. The reason I was asking, is there any such thing as a bad gift is because this could be considered a great gift or a bad gift, depending on how you slice it. So Snookabooka, can you open yours? Cole and Paul, y'all's are actually different looking, but it's the same thing. I'm so mad. You're supposed to like unbox it together. Open it, got my knife. I'm so mad. <laughs> Snook, oh goodness. I got my knife. <laughs> I'm dead. Do you have your mask on? You could tell, uh, <clears throat> you could tell uh, Mr. Montgomery, I'm mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> that you what? Tell Mr. McGarry you mad at him. Yeah. Tell Daddy. Ah. <laughs> he, won't, he won't come on the show. He got yeah. to. He has to support me. He There's has to be a zero percent chance. We can't even get Diddy to take a photo. Diddy doesn't take really? photos. Diddy that's, doesn't show his. That's legs. why I like him. Diddy is like one of those. Like he's just he, he does like what he does. Oh, that's why he likes him because he's like him. He don't want to take any photos, and he don't need all the Chris all the birthday hype. They are about similar with that. I would say that's very true. <laughs> Do you like it, Snookabooka? So y'all's look different. Everybody's is style different, but yeah, I had, it was going to be like a, a remote show and tell type of thing where you guys all held up your balls. They're all different colors. I'm so angry. Like, come on, post office. They're killing me. Snook, what you think? I love it. And you know what? There, nobody better come here and try to dribble this ball. <laughs> this place. No, dribbling, no dribbling allowed. Yeah. Wait, did, you so, in, did you send it in an Amazon box? No, um, no, it's in a plain brown box. And it says from the UPS store because I was shipping out a lot of things for remotely. And I just put them all as that address because I didn't want to have my home address on there. So that's why I was saying it's, yeah, it's the, it says UPS store. Y'all sure you didn't get any square boxes? I'm positive. Can't I've, opened it. It. I've opened every box and hit that doorstep just to make sure everything is here where it's supposed to be here. And that was not one of the things I opened. Believe me, I would have known. Look at that detail. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I, I can't wait. I'm what, so color, mad. what color is mine and what color is it Cole? Yeah. Uh, yours what is Paul. Yours is red and blue, I believe. And Cole, yours is orange and. I okay. can't remember. They're all like, so I try to play off of our background templates and have the colors like merging into other colors. So everything is two tone. I'm mad. Y'all supposed to all see it and show it. And you know what? This, I'll add, this is mine since you gave it to me. But Renee has like a thousand basketballs here, all kinds of Olympic balls, all yes. kinds of college balls, AAU balls. Well, well, when are, when are, when are you going to do show and tell? Balls. I got all kinds of balls. But you need to start nice. doing show and tell. Yeah. What well, do you want me to take some of that stuff off of your hands? Is it getting full over there? It's oh, <laughs> not mine. It's your dad's. Now, Diddy would be on here if you tried to remove that stuff. <laughs> 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 Snook and them got all the goods. They got all my stuff, man. All my stuff. I'm mad, but Snook and Booker, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making us some cookies. Cole loves them. I'm like, I'm not in love with Texas Lilies. There's more, I love egg custard pie, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. But Texas Lilies, it feels like the holidays, or Lucy's Texas Lizzie's. I don't know why I call them that, but Texas Lizzie's. Thank you, Snookabooka. And we're going to move on to remote roses. And okay, so again, continuing along with the Christmas theme, that is your guys' <laughs> hint. Get your boards out. Okay, get your boards. We're continuing along with this week's Christmas theme. And I'm going to start out, you guys, I don't know. I don't even know what you guys know anymore, okay? So I'm just going to start. Look at Cole, she's so disappointed. I'm just going to start out. That is the worst feeling, though. Cole and them haven't got an answer right, I think, since the show started. No. And no, they haven't. always know who the person is. I, I, don't. All right. You haven't gotten any of them right, Snookabooka. You put no. Papa, you put you Papa on the wall. You put I mean, <laughs> Lafonso Ball. Y'all don't know. They don't know people's names, but they know who I'm talking about. So for yeah. this person, hint number one. Before fame, this McDonald's All-American went to prom with Jessica Alba in his senior year at Crossroads High School. Oh, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah, right. 
right. Um, hint number two. Do you really know it? Don't give it away if you do. Paul might know it. Hit number two. This big, this big three baller was drafted third overall in the 1999 NBA draft by the Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets. Oh, yeah. See, I already knew it. Let me see. Don't. Who is it, Paul? Who is it, Paul? Go ahead. Let me show it. Let me show it. Kobe. Uh, wrong. Hit number three. <laughs> this two time. <laughs> NBA All-Star was one of the original investors for Vitamin Water, cashing out after it was sold to Coca-Cola for $4.1 billion. Oh, I don't know the name. I in 2007. Name. Okay. <laughs> and, and I'll just wait. <laughs> just wait for the answer. Hit number four. This entrepreneur was founder of several companies, including Sports and Lifestyle and Culture, aka Slick, and Big and No Label. Oh, I know who it is now. Oh, Paul knows now for sure this time. I don't think that first one might be wrong. I Googled this. Let's see. Yes, Paul. It is Baron Davis. Hit number five. This former UCLA Bruin created the Black Santa Company. He's on my shirt. This is Baron oh, Davis. God. He created <laughs> he created the Black Santa Company in 2016, which sells beanies, shirts, uh, onesies, all kinds of items. And Black Santa celebrates diversity and storytelling through engaging content and high quality products because I remember Snook used to paint our Santa's black on the tree and stuff. I'm not going to like Snook, right? Like we used to like, he, he made something that we all knew we wanted. Like we all wanted a little bit of representation. Baron Davis gave us that. This is called Black Santa. Um, and that is. You see, uh huh. he hasn't been painted yet. I was upset that I didn't have a chance to give him a little bit of color. Oh <laughs> he, needs a little tan, Ma. He, little, he needs a little tan, don't he? Just a little tan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he, 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 so yes, Darren, Baron Davis is now known as the People Santa, Black Santa. I think he does a lot of different giveaways in the community and different things of that nature. So of course, on Christmas, our remote roses, should I throw them again? I didn't like the last throw. I feel like I need to make it rain more or something with the roses. Like, what do you, like, I got to throw it up and let it fall down. Yeah, we got to see it come down in the camera. Get someone, throwing, someone to throw it at you. Oh, throw it at me. I'm not getting the roses. I'm th I'm giving. All right, let me see how this works. Because oh, I don't want to mess you. up the camera here. So Baron Davis, the what actually oh what is it? It is um Walt Baron Walter Lewis Davis. These roses are for you, Black Sit. <laughs> <laughs> These houses are for you, Black Santa. And I also have a quote from Baron Davis. With all that's going on in this country, and particularly in the African-American community, I want to offer heroes and role models through storytelling. Black Santa is the first character. His mission is to celebrate diversity, the joy of giving, and the magic of good. Good. He's here to bring people together and have fun. I think that's a great message this Christmas, bringing people together, having fun. Look, we're together, even though we're remote. That's the whole premise of the show. I probably never, Cole, have we ever like talked this much face-to-face -face weekly? Like just being real? <laughs> weekly. We, we had our family FaceTimes and, you know, we try to make sure we connected here and there, but every week, no, our schedules were so hectic and, she was either on a plane, I was in a, on a football field or yep. lacrosse field. So it was always hit and miss with our schedule. So this is the most, since our adult probably life, yeah. that we've actually every single week connected and had something to say to each other. Now, mom and them, I talk to them every day, but just seeing someone and talking, this yeah. is different. Yeah, definitely. I think, and like I think we that's Renee's fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like to talk. This is another thing. I don't talk on the phone like casually. No. Like if somebody calls me, I ask them like, "Yo, what's up?" Like, cause I'm I'm expecting them to have something to tell me. Like I'm just not one of those people that are like, "Hey, girl, what you doing?" Oh yeah, you know my day was wild. Like I literally <laughs> never in my life do that. So I'm not the talk on the phone type. So Paul is probably right. It's probably cause Cole talks to Snook every day. Like so I talk to Snook every day too. But yeah, I'm just. I'm 
But I just think it's about different. to just sit on FaceTime and be like, hey, guys, yeah. how are you? Like, I just really don't do that now. We yeah. sit on the phone and watch a game, and every now and then we'll say something to each other, but the phone is connected to both of us, and we're there, but we're, you know, watching a game together. Yeah, we watch, we really do watch her games remotely. Snook, are you in the jungle? Like, Snook of Booker, she has a very green thumb. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> and we have a whole garden at home. Look at her. We got a whole... <laughs> scared of you we got a whole garden at home and so snook there's a lot of life in west virginia wild and wonderful we are definitely that wild and wonderful oh, Cole, Cole got the shirt we are wild and wonderful me and my sisters are wild don't try us we don't play about our family but listen no. i digress the point i said all of that was because when i said this show remotely renee and I talked about connecting while being remote. I really meant that. Like, I know y'all thought I meant con connecting with you guys while being remote. And that's amazing because I love connecting to, I don't even like calling it my fan base. I'm going to call it my, my friend base. Um, so I like connecting to people on the internet. Um, but also this is cool for me because this is like one hour a week where I set aside to make sure I connect with my friend, who's also my manager, Paul, my sister, who's also my co-host, Cole, my mom, who's also my snookabooka and my everything in my life. So I have a whole hour where I just connect to them about stuff happening in the world. So I love it. Thank you guys for watching us every week because you actually are watching me get to connect with my family. So we'll be back next week. Hey, yo, wait, actually, you know what I'm going to play on the way out because, you know, I'm that type. Y'all better get used to it, okay? I'm that type. Hey, hey, hey. I can't wait. I can't we'll see y'all next week. <laughs> I'm crazy.